what is the history of morality and what are their effects on our ways of life? I am Rodrigo Gim, an anthropologist and social critic, and this is Critique with Nietzsche and Foucault. On the Genealogy of Morals is a book published in 1887 by the German philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche. It consists of a preface and three related essays that expand and follow through on concepts Nietzsche sketched out in his previous book, Beyond Good and Evil. Today I will start this series of four videos about the Genealogy of Morals, uh, one preface video, this one we're doing today, and three more videos, each one on each essay of the book. In the preface, Nietzsche tells how this question of the origin of morality has been part of his concerns since the age of 13. And at that time, he decided to make God the father of all evil. Over time, he learned to separate theological prejudice from moral prejudice, and according to him, Citation. I ceased looking for the origin of evil behind the world. End of citation. In the preface, Nietzsche tells how he decided that a critique of moral values was needed and that the value of these values themselves must be called into question. His questions now turned to citation. Under what conditions did man devise these value judgments, good and evil? and what value do they themselves possess? Have they hitherto hindered or furthered human prosperity? Are they a sign of distress, of impoverishment, of the degeneration of life? Or is there revealed in them, on the contrary, the plenitude, force and will of life, its courage, certainty, future? End of citation. Note that in asking about the value of good and evil values, Nietzsche's question is related to the practice, the life of those values, what they affirm or negate, that is, the way of life that experiences these values. Good and evil not as falling from heaven, values falling from above, but as relations between lives, between forces and the will to life. For Nietzsche, it is humans who are creators of values within their historical and cultural contingencies always, but for Nietzsche, there is no impartial subject of the judgment of values. The subjects are always operators and creators of values. That is why Nietzsche says he's doing a history of moral values. He shows how many philosophers, such as Schopenhauer, for example, started from a kind of value held to be universal in judging all values. The value of altruism, a non-egoistic value, the instincts of piety, self-denial, self-sacrifice, which Schopenhauer, among others, had placed as universal values, became a value in itself within with time and says Nietzsche on this basis Schopenhauer says no to life and no to himself that's to say Nietzsche points to morality as inseparable from a negation of life a will to nothing a nihilism that is not productive because it only negates without first affirming anything in itself the dominant morality in Nietzsche's time is, according to him, a morality of the superestimation of goodness, where the will to life becomes weak because it must lower itself to a condemnation of life as its first value. The good man, as having more value than the bad man or evil man, is nothing more than a prejudice. Citation. One has taken the value of these values as given, as factual, as beyond all question. One has hitherto never doubted or hesitated in the slightest degree in supposing the good man to be of greater value than the evil man, 
of greater value in the sense of furthering the advancement and prosperity of man in general, the future of man included. But what if the reverse were true? What if a symptom of regression were inherent in the good, likewise a danger, a seduction, a poison, a narcotic, through which the present was possibly living at the expense of the future? Perhaps more comfortably, less dangerously, but at the same time in a meaner style, more basely? So that precisely morality would be to blame if the highest power and splendor actually possible to the type man was never in fact attained? So that precisely morality was the danger of dangers? End of citation. Nietzsche ends the preface by showing that there is no condemnation of morality in itself because that would be a moral judgment. He wants to come to a gay science of morality, to a point where he can rejoice in knowing the workings of morality in a serious and profound way, but always from a big yes to life at first. To achieve this, however, it's necessary to ruminate on the ideas that he brings, that is, to constantly reassess the implications of a revaluation of morality. Because even today, morality is a dominant mode of thought and of ways of life. So that's all for this video on the preface of, on the genealogy of morals. In the next video, we will talk about the essay number one of the book. See you next Thursday.